I'm Sharon Thormelin, and this is Harp Gathering 2020 Virtual Harp Conference. This workshop is Demystifying Memorization, and I'm so glad you clicked on this link, especially if you want to learn to memorize your music. So um, we are going to start with a very easy piece, um, just to kind of go through what the methods are for memorizing. And if you are a beginner, this is a very good piece for you. And you should be able to click on a link somewhere to get the PDF. If you can't find that link, you can email me harps at thorharp.com and I will send you um, the music. This first piece is called All Together Now and it's by Pamela Bruner in her Play the Harp Beautifully book, Level One and uh, it is used with permission. So the first thing I do when I'm learning a piece is if I can, I will listen to the piece. So I will look on YouTube for it. That's a really great place, really good resource. Uh, if not, I'll try to play through it. Some of the pieces that I try to learn are a little more complicated than this, but um, you know, there must be a reason I'm trying to learn this piece. Like I heard it and I thought it was a really fun piece to play or something so but I'm going to play this for you and um, so that you can at least hear what this is so it's very simple do is learn to play a phrase. And I'm going to just say here that the first measure is one phrase. So that would be the most simple way to look at it. So we would put our fingers on 3, 2, 1, C, D, E, which are the notes there, and we would play those three notes. And if you were um, if this were more complicated, it might make more sense to play it over and over again, but I think probably one time is enough. We can see what that is. But now I want you to play it looking at your fingers. If you were looking at the notes on the page, now look at your fingers and see what your fingers are doing when you're playing that. And then, you know, so now you've got that memorized already. And then the next phrase is the same thing, only one note up. So what I would do next would be, I would go back to the beginning and play those two phrases. And then add the next phrase. Once I got that down, if you need to stop the video at any time, go ahead and stop it so that you can play that more than once. And I'm only doing the right hand right now. If you want to add your left hand, of course, you can always do that, and your left hand does exactly what the right hand does. Okay, so we've done the first two phrases. We're going to do the third phrase, which is just one note up from the second phrase. And then go back to the beginning and play the whole, all three phrases. Watching your fingers. And then if you've done that, you've got that memorized. You're just doing three. You can always block the chords or block the, the phrase. So your finger pattern there, your placement. And then the fourth phrase is just the same as the second phrase, only going down. So you can see that those two notes, uh, the D and the F are just reversed. So now we're gonna play the F first. 
play that again and watch your fingers. So now let's go back to the beginning. And hopefully you have done that and you've watched your fingers because that will really help you memorize. I think that's the biggest thing for me is if I know what my fingers are doing, I know what my finger placement is, so my fingering, um, then that's half the battle, more than half the battle. The second line is really the first three measures of the second line are the same as the first. So let's just do those. And here's probably the first big complicated part. We're going to put our fingers on the C and E playing. We're going to go down, play the E first. And if you want to do your left hand, you're going to put your fingers on the same E and C below, but you're going to play those two fingers at the same time as you play the E. So that, that line from the beginning again is... play the whole piece up to that point. So let's just do that. It's what, five seconds, 10 seconds. All right, here we go. And going down, start over. And here's our other part where C and E So, we've seen the rhythm being the same, we've seen the pattern of the, the three fingers starting from three to one going up the same. Um, let's see, uh, we've seen phrases that are similar to the other phrases. Sometimes people will mark their music with colored pencils. So if you did that on here, you could mark measures one through three, say like a blue pencil. I don't have a blue pencil here, but I could go like that if that were a blue pencil. And then do the same thing with measures five through eight, and or five through seven, because those are exactly the same. Um, okay, well, let's see. I suppose we can go on. So let's measure nine starts exactly the opposite as measures as the first line. So we're going to start the G, F, E and go down. Same fingering pattern, same three fingers in a row, no skips. And we're going to go down. So we go. And if you need to do that again, do it again and look at your fingers. Don't look at the music anymore. Look at your fingers. You know what to do. Then we're going to go down one note, starting on the F. Do the same exact thing. Now we're going to start on the E. Do the same exact thing. Let's stop there and we'll do all those measures, those three measures again, starting with our thumb on the G. Three down, and then we skip down one note. Not skip, step down one note. Okay, here we go. measure of that line, it's going to be D, E, F going up. So if you look at your fingers, we've got the G going down, the F going down, the E going down. Now we're going to do the D going up. And I would start again at the beginning of the piece and go all the way to that point. See how far you can get before you can't remember how it goes. And wherever that point is, look at the music and see what it is that you missed. Maybe it was the, the measure that goes like that. Couldn't remember that, that that was a skip there. So look at the music, see where it is, and then start again 
and see if you can get past that part and play all the way through to measure 12. So let's go on with measure 13, which starts the same as measure nine. So if you had colored pencils, you could put um, maybe a green pencil in that measure, just that measure, because the other measures doesn't go along that way. So let's um, look at that. We're gonna do G, F, E. The next measure is C, D, E. So let's do that again. If you want to look at the music one more time, look at the music and we'll play that. And now let's do it without looking at the music, looking at your fingers. C with your third finger. Good. All right. Let's do that one more time. to again turn off the video and do that three or four more times do that okay then so after we do that we're going to do the F from the F go down and then the C by itself so let's just do those last two measures starting on the F going down That whole last line, if you look at your fingers, coming up from the C, going down from the F, and the C. And I think you should turn off the video now and play the whole thing from the beginning. See if you can do that. And again, wherever it is that you didn't remember, Look at the music, see what that is, and try to get that into your fingers. Okay, here's The Rights of Man. This is a little more complicated tune, and I'm going to play it for you to start with, and um, so that we can listen to it. That's our first step in learning a tune, is listening to it. So I'm just going to play the right hand, um, so we can really just focus on that. So you can play that over again uh, just by stopping the video and rewinding. So that's The Rights of Man by James Hill in the early 1800s this was written. Uh, so let's take this apart by phrases. And I have some uh, lines over the top of the notes that show you the phrases. I want to break up the first phrase into two sections. I think we'll just play the three notes going up and the the notes going back down. So we're just going to do three notes up and back down the same way we came, but the timing is different. So we're going to go G, A, B, A, G. And we'll do that again. If you were looking at the music that time, let's look at the music one more time. This time, let's do it without looking at the music and looking at your fingers. You'll see exactly what your fingers are doing. 
Okay, now we're going to add the second phrase. So actually, let's just add the second part of the phrase, which is going to be crossing over to the F and playing the E. So we'll go up. We're going to cross over to the F. And we put our finger back on the F, our thumb back on the F. So. And do that a number of times. We're gonna, now we're going to add the rest of it, which just takes you right back up the way you came, only with eighth notes instead of quarter notes. So we have... And we're going to go right back up. And you cross under with your third finger. Cross over your thumb. Thumb back on F. Cross under with your third finger. And do that five times. I'm not going to do it five times, but I'll do it one more time. Okay, now we're going to look at the next phrase, and we're going to do that whole thing. And it's really almost the same as um, the first phrase, only different rhythm, but our fingering goes up, and we go right back down, cross over with your, sec with your thumb, and then you skip the C. Do that five times. E, F, G, back down, cross over to the D, and B. You can say the notes as you go. E, F, G, F, E, D, B. And watch your fingers. After you've looked at the notes, you know what to do now. Now we're going to go back to the beginning and play all of that. So, here we go. And that's what we have so far. So play that ten times if you need to, to get that memorized. One of the hard parts is when you come back up here, you have a jump all the way up to the G. So notice where your jump is going to so that you know. If you've been watching your fingers, you'll know. And we jump to the G. Oops, I was wrong. We jump to the E. Darn. Okay, scratch that. We don't jump to the G. We jump to the E, but we're going up to the G. Let's do that again. So it's to the E that you're jumping. Okay, next phrase. So you'll see the next phrase starts on the B, which is the same note that the second phrase ended on. So you've gone. And now you're gonna play that same B again and jump up to the D and down, and cross over with your thumb again, come back up. So, so many of these are like what we did down there when we did this and we went back up. So we're doing that here. Coming back up with our thumb. Let's do that again. Just the B, skip the D, and go down every note. And cross over. Okay, now we might start at the beginning again and see if we can do all of that. Back up. Skip to the E. Skip the C. Play the B again and every note and back up to the A. And that's the whole first line, which is great because the second line does a lot of repeat. So let's do that again. And 
I do believe on your video settings, you may have a place where you can slow the video down if you need to. I know on YouTube you can. I'm not sure if in this format you'll be able to do that. Um, okay, so next line starts exactly the same way. We just did... Um, and then we start the same way again with the G-A-B. Same thing as the first line. Same thing. And here's our change. We're going to reach up to the G. This must have been what I was thinking of with the G. And you go G, F, G, E, way down to the G, E again. Bah, bah. I love that part. Okay, so everything's the same. It's just the second line. This is still the same. Here's the difference up to the G. E, E, E. Okay, so you'll want to do that 10 times. Okay, so we've just gone over the whole A part of the song. That is eight bars, actually. And it repeats. It has a repeat sign at the end and at the beginning, and you'll repeat that part. So that will be 16 bars once you've repeated it. And I just want to go over the main elements that we talked about in memorizing. So the first one was to listen. So you want to listen to the music. There are many, many, many um, videos on YouTube of the rights of man, fiddle players, guitar players, you name it, you'll find it. So listen to them. They'll all be different. My version is probably different, but um, this one works for me. <laughs> uh, the second thing is to play phrases. So you'll want to play those phrases and repeat them five to ten times, making sure that you have played them with the music and then you've turned away from the music and watched your fingers play the same thing so that you can memorize it. That's how you're going to memorize it. So actually, those are the main things. Um, so let's go to the B part now. So this uh, starts um, on the same three notes, but up an octave. And um, it carries through a little bit differently. So let me just play the first. Um, I'm going to play the first phrase, but we're going to break that up. So let's see. long phrase. That actually was the first four bars. Four bars. I don't want to do that. So we're going to do just, I think, the first measure. And it sounds like this. And that's as far as we're going to go for, for one, we'll call that a phrase. Uh, so we go three up. And we're going to toggle back and forth a little bit on that uh, G, uh, B, and A, B, A, B. Now here we have where we skip. We're going to skip the A, we're going to skip the F. And so we have an E minor chord there going down. Let me do that again. Toggle, and now we have our skip. And then we're going to go up three notes, and then we're going to cross under with our two finger. This is the only place in the tune where we cross under with our two. Otherwise, it's always been our three. So we'll do that again. Three up, toggle one time, and then every other one. Now come up every string, and you'll end with your thumb on the G, on the B, because that's where we're going next. And we're going to do that same toggle, but that part ends a little differently. So let's not go there yet. So we're going to do it two or three more times. Toggle and skip. Come all the way up every string. And we'll do it again. So that's a little more complicated than what we've seen so far. So make sure you do that enough times that you have that in your heart, in your fingers, in your harp, 
in your eyes, everywhere. Okay, one more time. Now we do the same beginning, the little toggle, and the skip down. Only here we're going to change and go to the G. We're going to skip the F. So we have uh, let's do that much again. So we go up three, toggle, skip, back to the G, and go straight down three in a row. All right, so from here, I would go back to the beginning of that part. And we go up, toggle, skip, skip, go down. And that takes us to the end of the second measure. So do that five to ten times. Make sure that you've got that down. So we're going to do it once more, and then I'm going to go on so you can see how that all fits together. stop here and go to my second finger, do that twice, and then pick it up with my third finger for the run up because it will be perfect. Oh, here's where we're going to skip under with the second finger again. And then we go every other one and back up every other one. So let's do that part again. So we're going to, let's go with the two finger on the B, no, on the D, sorry, it's a B minor chord, D note. We're going to go two times, and then third finger going up, and it brings you right to your thumb to the A, every other one. I do want to say here that fingering is really important, but it doesn't have to be the fingering that I've chosen. So just to look at some options there. You could do your second finger on that D all three times and cross under with your third finger. Same thing, you end up with the same thumb on A. So if you don't like that, the fingering that I've chosen, you can choose a different fingering. Uh, same thing when we do um, the measure uh, 10, where we've done our second toggle, uh, you could go down with four fingers and decide what fingers you're going to do your other B, uh, D's with. Whoops, I just cross under with my third finger there. So pick the fingering that works for you. And just because it's written on your music as certain fingering, you don't have to do it that way. But pick something that works. If you're constantly making mistakes, um, you probably have fingering that isn't working. That's the first place to look. Okay, so we're going to go back to measure nine. This is the beginning of the B part. Don't forget the pickup notes that are um, back at measure eight, the end of the second line there. So we need that um, G A, and then we end up with the G at, or the B at the top of measure nine. So here we go. Toggle, skip, run right up, straight up, toggle, skip, skip, and go down. Here we go with our D, third finger on D for me anyway, and then every other one. And I should say, that um, when we're doing the every other one, whether it be after the toggle, look at what your every other one is. What chord is that? So in the case in measure nine, um, it's an E minor chord that you've skipped every other one. And that's an E minor chord. It doesn't change chords to an E minor till you get to the E, but still an E minor chord that you've shaped there. And then when we're doing the other one, um, where we go, now we have a D chord, D major chord, 
and we're going down and back up on that. So this is going to take some time to keep playing these little phrases and putting them together until you can play the whole that whole line there. So we've got the three up, toggle, the E minor chord, go straight up, toggle, E minor chord, skip and go down, third finger, and the D chord, back up. All right, so um, do that a hundred times. Then we're going to go down. And this is, I think, the first time where uh, I have, for my fingering, to use a fourth finger. And we're going to go down four fingers, back up. And here's another place where you can do, there's two choices here. One is you can put your fourth finger here again. So what you've got is four fingers down, four fingers up again. Or, and I, and I really think this is a better one. I actually taught this song to Dave the other night. He doesn't play the harp. And he liked the second fingering better, and I actually do too. So we're going to go down four. Do a two here. Cross under two. And you've come to the same place with your thumb on the B. So you have two options. Four finger, two, cross under two, and you're back up to the B with your thumb. Or four on the F and up to the B with your thumb. Okay, so now you've heard that a whole lot of times, and maybe that will um, sink in as to actually what the to the melody is. So we're starting with those pickup notes on measure twelve. So the G and the F are the pickup notes. Four fingers going back up. And I'm going to do the two here. Two on F, thumb back on G, A. Okay, do that a whole bunch of times and then we'll move on. So then we're up at the B and we're going to do a fun little thing where we go, we skip and we put our thumb down one and then we skip again. So it's, let me see how that fits back in. So, so that's B, G, A, F, G. And then actually gonna go to the E. And then we're back to that same phrase that was at the end of the A part. Okay, so let's do that part again. We're gonna go pick up note to 12, four down, back up, back down with your second finger, cross under your second finger. Now every other one, back up and skip, back up, and then hold it there, and then we go to the E, which we've already done. So let's go back to the beginning of the B part, see if we can do that. So starting on G, A, B. Toggle, skip, go up, toggle, skip, Skip and go down. Third finger, skip under two. D chord, back up. Four fingers. Second finger under with your second finger. And every other one. Different kind of every other one. Same thing we already know. I think what I want to do is play the song with the left hand one time and um, just to show you what it sounds like with the left hand. 
So here we go from the top. is that you can kind of play it as you feel it. I also noticed, which was interesting, that I played it with my fourth finger both times. Um, and so somehow in the left hand, playing the left hand, that's how, what that felt better to do was with my fourth finger. So um, let's just look and see if there's anything else to talk about here. Uh, I guess I would say that when you're away from your harp, you uh, might want to try visualizing the piece. Maybe as you're falling asleep, you can think about the piece in your head, see if you can remember the melody, see if you can remember your fingering. Um, think about the direction that your fingers are moving. If you know the melody of the song, you'll know that your fingers are going to be moving up or your fingers are going to be moving down or there's a big jump in the music. Um, so I think that's about it. that will help you with memorizing. So first of all, just remember to listen to the melody, get it into your head. That will really help. Uh, break it down into phrases, play, play the notes on the page, play it, um, and then see where your fingers are on the harp when you play those notes on the page so that you can see the shapes and um, play those shapes. So like in the first piece that we did, the all together now, if you were part of that um, part of the video, you'll want to shape your finger fingers close together because every time you go on three strings that are right next to each other. 
So remember this. And you'll always want to shape those fingers to that um, finger shape of, of the notes. When you get to the that eighth measure where you've got it a little different shape, you'll shape it differently. So you'll be going, uh, and then you'll shape your fingers differently to play that part. Okay, same thing in Rights of Man. We'll be doing, uh, you know, this kind of thing. And all of that happens on these five strings. So you'll know that whatever shape you're doing, you're doing it on those five strings. Then you come up here, and you're gonna do, gonna go up and then come down, and then you've got that shape just like in that other tune where you're skipping one. So always shape the music, shape your fingers to the music. Um, I wanted to show you a sheet where I put the colored lines on it where there were similar measures. So I hope you can see this. I will have it uh, as a handout. Um, chords above the staff. Those are really, really handy to have. I think I have that on um, the rights of man. I, I, I will have them on all together now. So the chords on the tops of the, of the uh, measures will help you with your left hand, what the left hand is playing, you know, underneath the G chord, it's a G chord, G chord. You'll know that that's a G chord. So it will help you with your theory, uh, learning more about music. And um, most likely the right hand notes will be part of the chord, at least a lot of the notes in that measure. Um, I think maybe that is about all. So I just want to thank Denise and Michael for doing this and having it for everybody out there that wants to watch. I hope you got something out of this video and uh, we'll see you next year in Ohio. Thank you.